a hanging. It was about 40 yards to the gallows. I watched the bare brown back of the prisoner marching in front of me. He walked clumsily with his bound arms, but quite steadily with that bobbing gait of the Indian who never straightens his knees. At each step, his muscles slid neatly into place. The lock of hair on his scalp danced up and down. His feet printed themselves on the wet gravel. And once, in spite of the men who gripped him by each shoulder, he stepped slightly aside to avoid a puddle on the path. When I saw the prisoner step aside to avoid the puddle, I saw the mystery, the unspeakable wrongness. San Quentin State Prison. Procedure number 769. The witnesses to an execution. Types of witnesses. A. State witnesses. State witnesses will not have their names made public. B. VIP witnesses. VIP witnesses will not have their names made public. C. News media witnesses. News media witnesses will not have their names made public unless they choose to do so. The distribution of those present shall be as follows. Attorney General, one. Staff, five. Assistant Director of Communications, one. State witnesses, 12 plus three alternates. VIP witnesses and observers, six. News media witnesses, 15, including a public information officer. Witnesses requested by inmate, five. Spiritual advisors, two. A total of 50 witnesses. This, this 15th century torture chamber-like thing. This, these two chairs sit in the chamber, and they're, they're wooden and old-looking, and they look like something that, that was out of some, some history book, of, some, of the kind of torture, the things people used to do to one another centuries ago. You're seeing somebody's body go through very ugly and obviously tremendously painful moments. You know, I knew that in four seconds I would have 900 parts per million of hydrocyanic gas when it only takes 300 parts per million to make it fatal and irreversible. For three or four days, I couldn't even talk about it. I, I didn't even, when, when the subject was brought up, I would either leave the room or just, I, I couldn't even talk about it. I could not bring myself to tell anybody what I had actually seen. It was so horrible, I could I, I didn't even have the words to describe it. I don't feel sorry at all for this man. I have no remorse for going and witnessing this execution. I would do it again and again. He had very few people who loved him. There were people who cared, but the passion for the most part in that room was passion to kill, hate, the passion of hate. July 5th, 1978, a hot summer morning. Robert and Daniel Harris had decided to rob a bank. They went looking for a getaway car. 16-year-old John Majeski and his best friend, Michael Baker, decided to go fishing. But first, they went looking for lunch. Robert and Daniel Harris were here at the Jack in the Box trying to hotwire a car to use in their planned bank robbery. They weren't having much luck when John Majeski and Michael Baker pulled up. According to the record, Robert Harris got into the boys' car back at the Jack in the Box where they had started eating lunch and forced them to drive here. He promised he wouldn't hurt them. Yeah. 
It was July 5th, 1978. Uh, I was a patrol uh, policeman in San Diego and got a radio call that a witness had followed the bank robbers to their home. And so I and about half a dozen other officers surrounded their home. They called for backup. A SWAT team arrived. One of the officers was Steve Baker, Michael's father. We were there for probably 10 or 15 minutes when uh, Harris walked out. He didn't know we were outside. Uh, and I don't know why he walked out, but he came out and uh, I was standing probably six feet away from him with a 12-gauge uh, shotgun and arrested him. And my partner put handcuffs on him and took him away. He used their car to rob a bank. And after his capture bragged that he had eaten the rest of the boys' hamburgers after he shot them. A San Diego...